Hello YouTubers, my name is Attila Mate from Blue Sky Photography and today I would like to talk to you about photo editing and how to edit your photos fast and effectively in, uh, in uh, any photo editing software basically. Now, obviously it depends a lot on the software you are using, but generally speaking, you know, um, the kind of like, let's say the pro level photo editing softwares, you know, they will have all these kind of uh, uh, editing uh, tips and tricks, you know, what I, what I will say in this video. So you will be able to do now, obviously, if you start something with a very, very basic photo editing software, maybe it won't have all these things, you know, but if you have uh, any kind of um, higher level photo editing software, I would say you will have all these kind of adjustment possibilities, you know, so you can do it. Now, in any photo editing workflow, you will have to realize yourself and you will work out yourself which is the best way for you. Now, obviously, how I do, it might be not good for you. It depends on your uh, preferences, I would say. Now, the most important is in a photograph, you know, other than the artistic value, which is the composition and the, the lightning, you know, the most important thing is the exposure and the white balance, in my opinion. Now, first of all, that is what you have to fix it. If you have any issues, you know, with the exposure or with the white balance, you have to fix that first of, uh, first hand. Now, when you get into, you know, you have batch editing usually in uh, all kind of these uh, uh, higher level photo editing softwares. So you can do in batch editing these things. But in the same time, you can do individually because sometimes not every photo has the same issue. You know, maybe one has, the other one doesn't. So you can do, or you can select, you know, those ones who have this issue and then you can batch edit again. Now, when you finished with this, with the exposure and with the white balance or if you like the result you know then there are a few uh, tips i would say which will increase the 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 look of your photo you know it will be much pleasant to your eye you know again how much saturation do you give to a photo it's completely up to you and it's completely up to your taste to your preference you know i like saturated photos but that doesn't mean that that is good you know that means uh, that I like it and there are people who like saturated photos now again there is a, a statistic about this that most of the time people like uh, photos which are a little bit underexposed over the photos which are overexposed now like I said not all the time most of the time now this is a statistic I learned this in the photography school so if uh, they don't say the truth I don't say the truth I honestly, I never tested this with many people. I asked a few friends of mine and they are kind of confirmed the same thing, you know, that they like photos with, with, with darker tones, you know, and, and, uh, and not, not uh, overexposed photos, you know, they don't really like that. Now, like I said, this is not always the case. So let's get into my computer. I will show you a few uh, steps, you know, how I do my photos and uh, maybe you can learn something from it. If you want to add something to this, you know, feel free and leave a comment down below. You know, I'm not a, a, a person who does not make mistakes. You know, I do make mistakes and I do want to learn. So maybe you know something, but I don't know. Feel free and leave a comment down below. And uh, let's get into my computer and let's see that photo editing. Let's see. So we are in my computer now and uh, let's open up. Uh, DxO Photolab. Now I use DxO Photolab for this uh, video, but like I said, you can use also. I use Zoner Photo Studio. You know that's not a that's not an issue. You can use any kind of uh, uh, photo editing software, which is a little bit higher end. I would say I use sometimes uh, Lightroom. I use Photoshop. I use many kind of photo editing softwares. But the basic what I do, and most of the time I use DxO Photolab and Zoner Photo Studio. These two. I use this because it suits me and my needs, you know, and I like the workflow. It's very fast and it's very good. So let's see in the XO Photo Lab now. Like I said, first of all, I selected a photo over here. I do. I, I uh, got a few days ago. I did this photo and I really like it. You know, you can see the depth of field. You know how it falls in and falls off. You know, that's really really good. So 
like I said, first of all, you have to check the exposure and the white balance. Now you have most of the photo editing softwares. We'll have over here the histogram, like uh, you see Dexo Photolab it has, and Photo Studio it has as well. You can see over here the histogram. Now, after the histogram, when you look at the histogram, you can see that this photo is correctly exposed. Now, again, this is in the RGB, the histogram, you, you can only have, maybe you have only one line over here, but that's not the problem, you know. This shows in colors, but that's okay. So uh, it depends on how, how is your photo editing software. But this is, you can see that the photo is exposed okay. The exposure is okay. Now, if you want to do it a little bit brighter, you can do exposure compensation over here, and you can make it a little bit brighter. It, it depends how you like. It's completely up to you. But in the same time, I leave it like that because I think that this is correct. Again, you have to check the white balance. Now, the white balance is important because it can mess up your photo completely. Now, in this case scenario, you know, the white balance is okay. I don't really have any issue with the white balance. But again, if you want to check it, you know, or if you want to, uh, to, uh, to uh, make it warmer or cooler, you can do it with the white balance. So you can check the, the white balance and you can add if you want, you know, and I think that in my opinion, the white balance of this photo is completely fine. So I don't do anything with the white balance. Now, uh, let's see further on. Now, obviously, Dexo Photolab has some, uh, some uh, uh, distinct advantage uh, about uh, like, like other photo editing softwares will not have this. And that is the smart lighting, you know, and the clear view. Now, I really like smart lighting because if you just hit the smart lighting button, you can see that it will lighten up the photo. But in the same time, you can, uh, you can also see in some situations, now this is not the situation, but in some situations you can see that it will darken the photo. That means that it will analyze the photo and the, the parts of this photo where it needs to lighten up, it will lighten up. And in the same photo and at the same time, in some parts of the photo, it will darken if it's necessary. So that is really, really smart. That's why it's called smart lighting. Now, again, you can do this with spot weighted or uniform. It depends to you. And you can also, uh, it, it, um, it will recognize faces as well. If you do it uh, with uh, spot weighted, you know, it will, you see it says no faces detected over here. But uh, if you have a portrait or something, it will recognize faces as well. Now, like I said, this is really good and you can add intensity over here, but you see that it's not really, if you, even if I pull up, you know, it's not really changing the exposure. A little bit, but not really, not drastically. So, and that was the smart lighting, but this you don't have on other editing software, so that is not the case what you want to do. But this one with the selective tone, this one you do have in the softwares and you have to look at this very carefully. Over here, what I would do, the shadows, is you can lift up a little bit, you know, the shadows and the highlights, you can pull it down. Now, it depends on your photograph. And most of the cases, you know, if you have blown out highlights, it will be really, really difficult to get back the details. But this is the place where you do that. You get the details out of the shadows and of the highlights. If your photo was made on a very overcast day, you know, this is not the case. This is not a problem. But if your photo was done on a very sunny day, like this one, that, well, then the shadows and the highlights will be uh, on, on two sides, you know, clipping out. So if you will pull down a little bit the highlights and pull up a little bit the shadows, you know, you can see that the shadows are opening up. You can see over here, the photo will look much, much nicer. Now, after this, I arrived over here with the contrast. Now, again, this is the second part which Dexo Photolab, I really like this, and that is the Dexo Clear View. Now, other photo editing softwares don't have this again, so you cannot do this, but this is absolutely spectacular. Look at this, I just hit this and the photo will change immediately. You can see that it's, uh, it's very different. Look at this and look at this. And again, you can change the intensity, you know, how much do you want to be, you know, like you want a lot or only a little bit or some, but let's not use this now for the moment because you don't have that. So I will not use this, but in the same time, you have the contrast. Now, many photo editing softwares will have access to micro contrast and fine contrast. Some of them will not. Again, 
but you have the access to the real contrast you know now this is uh, the the basic contrast you know now this basic contrast i don't really like to use because if you use it too contrasty then it's the photo will not look really nice but in the same time i like very much to use micro contrast now in this situation you know like in any landscape if you pull up micro contrast your photo will be much poppier and this is the situation when you don't have a very expensive lens but you still want some micro contrast in your photos now that's the 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 situation look at this difference look at this this is without micro contrast rays and this is with micro contrast look even in the blurred out background you can see the difference look without with now micro contrast i say it's really really a helpful tool in photo editing if you want to uh, add a little bit of pop to your photos when i finished with this usually i go and i check the saturation color <clears throat> You can see over here vibrancy and saturation. Now this is completely up to your taste, you know, how you like it. I don't say that there is a right way or there is a wrong way, you know, it's completely up to you how you want to do it. After I did this, after I finished this, then I usually do some noise reduction if there is necessary. Now this is obviously was done with ISO 200 on a Fuji camera, so that's the minimum ISO, you don't have any ISO problems here. You can see the details completely. There is no noise in the photo. It's, it's free of noise, the photo. I mean, this is 200% this is, uh, or something. You know, it's, it's complete. No, it's 140% over here. So it's, uh, it's almost noise free completely. You can't see anything over here. But in the, in the, if it's necessary, this is when I do the noise reduction. After the noise reduction, again, I do some little bit of sharpening, but not in this case, because in this case it's not necessary. Look at these details. I mean, it's absolutely sharp as tech, you know, 120%. Look at that. It's unbelievably good. So if I finish that, then what it comes, usually if I have a building in a photo or something, I will straighten the light if there is a, if there is a distortion in the photo not in this case and if you don't do it you know if you don't shoot buildings and these kind of things you don't really uh, need to do that in some uh, situations photo editing softwares will have just with one click we have will have the lens as a profile you know like lightroom and even zoner photo studio and it will correct by itself or even this one you know this takes a photo lab will have the lens profile but in the same time i don't really use that only if it's really really necessary now this is kind of what I would do with the photo. Now, if you, uh, if you um, want to see what it was and uh, what, it, what, it, what we did, you see this is what it was and this is what we did. And you can see a very dif big difference between the photos. Now, this was unedited and this is edited. This was unedited, edited. You can see that there is a difference. Obviously, if you uh, if you look in the details as well, you can see a big difference. You can see over here in the shadows, you can see the details now. And if you want uh, to see where unedited, it's almost completely dark. Now, we, we got back a lot of details over here. Now, I hope that this video was helpful to you guys. I hope that you liked it. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and share my videos. And like I said many times, if you feel free and if you want to add something to this video and you think that I forgot something, feel free and leave a comment down below. If you think that I, um, I made a mistake or something, again, feel free and leave a comment down below in a polite manner and we can discuss it in a professional manner. Other than that, I wish you a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Guys.